What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Travis, of course, this is TWA Motorsports, and today, yes, we are going to be ripping some parts off this thing. So, uh, the main things I wanna get accomplished today, no, I'm not going into the interior just yet, but I wanna get a couple things off. So first of all, I need to get the exhaust off. I probably won't show you guys that. I'm The guy that I bought this from wanted the exhaust back. We made that deal originally, so. I'm just gonna try to thread it out. It's unhooked, there's no motor, so it shouldn't be too bad. That's the first thing I wanna get out of there, so I'm probably gonna crawl under there and do that without showing you guys. Now, the next thing that I wanna get off, though, is the spindles. Uh, and for a couple reasons, the main reason is I need them, but the other reason is with drop spindles, the spindles that are on this, you can't run a 16 inch wheel. So you can see where we push dirt, bringing this thing into the shop because the wheel didn't wanna turn. The other side has a 17 on it, so it was better, but this one would not turn. So I, uh, I ground some of the bottom ball joint off in order to get the wheel to even go on, but then we, un we basically loosened it up so it'd roll a little bit. It was wobbling, but got it in the shop. But I've got the original spindles, even though it's a Belltech box, I've got the original spindles off of the last NBS truck that I lowered. Exact same, so whether you buy an MBS truck or Yukon or Tahoe, they're all the same. And uh, so I've got the originals, which I'm gonna swap out. So I'm gonna be doing that. And at the same time, this thing does have, I'm gonna see if I've got a set. I think these are drop springs, I don't know, but it definitely has a set of Beltec shocks in the front. I might snag as well. Now they will not fit on the Yukon because the Yukon is a torsion bar setup. So um, yeah, that won't work but I may rob them out of here because I'm just gonna be um, selling this truck. I already have a buyer for it when I'm finished pulling the parts off of it. So I might as well try to sell a few parts as well. So I may sell those Beltec front shocks. I don't know, but uh, either way. Th so those two things, obviously we need to get off. And then I figured uh, I would try to get, it has an aftermarket fuel pump in it. So I thought I might snag that for down the road if I ever needed it. Um, it's got a really nice weather pack harness on it as well. You can see wound up in here. And um, so I think they spent some decent money on it and it looks like it's still in decent shape. Obviously it's in the tank, but um, I should be able to snag that out as well. So I will show you guys that. But um, before I drop it down off of the uh, go jacks, I'm gonna crawl under there, like I said, get the exhaust off and then we'll move to the front. I'll set you guys up on a tripod while I whip the front of this thing apart. I think it'll go relatively quick because we don't have to be super careful about what we're doing. I'm not gonna worry about scratching anything. And um, I think I can, I'm not gonna have to torque anything. I'm just gonna take it apart with the impact, put it back together with the impact. Now that we got the exhaust out, I ended up having to cut it. So I couldn't get it out as one piece. It, it, it didn't matter to him. I think he just wanted the mufflers mainly, but I'm gonna take them at all so I can get it out of here. But uh, I got it on the ground, took the Gojax out from under it. Guys, I did chalk the rear wheels. You can see my rubber stops in there. Those are super handy. Get you some of those. I'll list them in the description down below. But uh, we need to lift this thing up. You can see I put the axle on the bottom side when I put it in outside. And uh, just because I wanted it as high as possible. And I, it's really not put together correctly. But, you know, it's not going to matter. Um, but we need to get the front of this off the ground. So I'm going to lift it up with one of my jacks here and we're gonna get some jack stands under it just for some added safety. Guys, I like to use two jacks when doing this and you'll see what I'm talking about when we get a little further in the process. But uh, first, let's get this thing off the ground. I'm just gonna lift in the center of the K member right here or cross member, whatever you wanna call it and get it up off the ground as far as I can possibly get it. Probably pretty high, trying to equal out to the back because what we need is that lower A-arm needs to swing down almost completely out of the way in order for us to get the, the uh, spring out. Now, I don't necessarily know that I even need the spring out, so I may not do that because if I don't have, if I don't have another set of dr uh, springs laying around like a stock set and I don't know whether I do, I don't even need to take the spring out. I could take the shock out and leave uh, just this truck without a shot because I don't have a stock one to put back in it either. So either way, let's get it off the ground and get started taking these spindles off. So if you notice, I have a um, jack under the A-arm. And so the reason for that, I'll try to show you in just a minute or I'll tell you. But when I originally went out to 
put these wheels on to get it to roll around because I only had one spare. Um, the bottom, yeah, you can't even see it, but the bottom ball joint didn't have a nut on it. Well guys, if you don't have a nut on that thing, it could just pop off. And so, man, look at this. Not the way I'd probably do things, guys. I'm hoping I'm gonna be able to get this stuff off here. I mean, the fact that it's been replaced before and painted makes me feel a little bit better about it, but these are shot. They got a pretty good ridge on them. I thought about selling those originally, but they're just no good. So either way, it looks like I've got several zip ties to cut apart because they didn't put it back together in the correct manner. Um, typical though, that people don't do things correctly. The other cool thing is we can slide the wheel back and forth. Let's, uh, let's bust these. I believe they're 18s loose to get the brake off. And I'm not going to concern myself with normally you would hold it up, suspend it so it doesn't crimp the brake lines. It's actually got a new brake line on it, but um, we'll just leave it, let it kind of dangle around. This is uh, this truck has had some cutting and welding on the frame. The notch is kind of junky. Uh, the front obviously had the newer style bumper they welded on it, so. I don't trust this frame. I wouldn't feel comfortable selling to somebody that was gonna rebuild it anyway. So let's get this off. 18 millimeter is what you should need. I've got a swivel on it. I may, may not have enough power with the swivel. That's what I was afraid of. So what I'll do is I'll get a, break, a breaker bar, a breakover bar, and loosen them up by hand because I can't get my impact in this top one. Once you get them loose with that, it makes life a little simpler on you. I'm surprised my impact didn't take that out. It wasn't as tight as I thought. Now maybe we can run these out. set this and nah, we'll just let it dangle over here on the side for now and then I need to unplug our ABS line zip tied up here a lot of times when people don't know how to take this stuff apart they just break it so zip ties is their way of fixing it which I've done Can't say I've never done that. So we should be able to get the rotor off, set it aside. And now, need to get a couple more things loose here. Obviously we need to get our lower ball joint. We need to get the upper ball joint, which should be an 18. And remember I said there is not one on the bottom. So uh, kind of alarming. So I'm hoping that I can knock on it enough to get it loose, but let's go grab the 18 inch wrench. I don't think, I might be able to get an 18 ratchet on this. Yeah, I might be able to do that. And this should be, oh, it's an 18 also. That is not the original size. And we're gonna hope that this doesn't spin while we go to take it off. If it does, you can generally put something on the bottom here, but it, it's not spinning, so. And I'm not gonna take it completely off, I'm just gonna loosen it, because I'm gonna hit this with a hammer and bust the ball joints loose, hopefully. Now in this situation, since I don't care about the upper and lowers, I could potentially just use a pickle fork to separate it, but I actually don't have one because I don't like the way they separate ball joints. That should be good. 
Let's see about this one. I'm going to impact the bottom one. This uh, tie rod, because generally they like to spin. And it is spinning. There we go. That one you can go ahead and take out. Now you can see I don't have one on the bottom like I should. Um, that is why I put that in there because what happens guys is if this separates that spring will push apart and shoot out. Now the shock should, should keep it from doing that but not always is that the case. That's why it felt more comfortable having it like this. So let's get a big freaking hammer and give it a couple wraps down here on the bottom and up here on the top. So for a, this is a four pound sledge. This is gonna be pretty snug, I think. There we go. So the top is loose. I'm gonna go ahead and do the bottom now. And I don't care to mess up the ball joint, so I'm gonna hit from the bottom. I'm gonna go ahead and take this off too. Now you can see all we have holding is the bottom. Hopefully you guys can see that. I have a feeling it's going to fall off on the floor in a second. I should turn the camera off and hit on this guys I know it's probably really loud I'm not hundred percent sure uh, what brand of this this is but you guys can see the difference okay see how much higher the uh, this sets I'm hoping that these ride okay I guess we're gonna try them on the they look like they're in they're decent angles, you know. Look at the ball joints, how much, how far off they are. So, um, the factory GM spindle here, they're closer together. I don't know if you guys noticed, this doesn't line up, and this top one is quite a ways off. But your um, tie rod in, the way it sets up, is um, isn't is really close. But this is why I generally only use McGoys. Um, I've used Belltech and in fact I use Belltech on the Yukon but in these model trucks I've always used McGoys because I like that um, the way it, the geometry just you don't seem to have any bumps here so hopefully we don't have any issues with this but what we need to do at this point is I need to take these 15 millimeters out and move this hub over to um, the old or the yeah the original GM spindle so I could put this thing back together and it'll still be mobile once we do that Well, let's just go ahead and do that real quick 15 millimeters should be three of them and uh, We'll see if the impact will pop those out That was pretty simple Perfect now what I'm going to do, guys, I don't think this one has been trimmed. If it has, I may keep it and not put one back in it. So I don't have to trim mine. Eesh, I don't know, I can't tell. Yeah, I don't think it's been trimmed. All right, so I'll leave it on there. But we need to put 
our new spindle or our old spindle on here and reverse that process. And like I said, guys, I'm not worried about twerking anything because this is going for junk and parts when I'm finished. Normally, these would torque to 133. Now, you're probably wondering, like, how are you going to hook the bottom ball joint since it's completely cut off. Well, I'm hoping, guys, I can get it lifted high enough. Um, the Beltec kit actually comes with a smaller bolt or nut, I mean, for the bottom. I'm hoping I can get that on there. And uh, if I can, I don't ever use those because I generally run big enough wheels where this doesn't interfere, but Beltec supplies a shorter one so you can trim it off and it not rub like on a 17 or an 18. Uh, but like I said, I'm, I'm running a 20, so it shouldn't matter on the Yukon. So the bad news is, is that that didn't work. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put this in, uh, I'm gonna tie it up with the uh, tie rod in, I'm gonna tie it up with the upper and the bottom. We're just gonna put the wheel on and hope for the best because um, it's just cut too short, guys. Other side, I don't know since it had a 17 on it. Um, I don't even know if it's got a bolt in it either. So we'll just have to see when we get to that point. But let's see if we can at least get this one on. I may go get a jack, another jack to put support some of the weight on this while I'm doing it. At least getting this snugged up anyway. You can see what I did to combat my issues. I put another jack underneath that lower. And now we're gonna to try to we're gonna to try to hammer them down with the impact just so I have peace of mind that it's gonna, I guess, stay together. Uh, I'm gonna to try to do the I'm gonna to try to sneak in there with my swivel and do the same thing on the upper here. But I don't know, guys, whether I'm going to be able to get it or not. I may have to grab my clamp and clamp the A-arm and the spindle together and just do it by hand. The downside is I cannot get a bottom nut on that lower ball joint. So I'm going to hope the weight of the truck and the wheel will keep it in place. <laughs> Normally, I wouldn't do that. But anyway, that's what we're doing. It's just, it's trimmed off too short. Like I said, I trimmed it off. I should have thought about that, but I, I was to the point where I just wanted it together. So, let's get this thing back on here if we can. Of course, it's, looks like it's compressed a little bit. Still think we can get it in here though. Yeah. get our 18s back in and then our wheel back on. And I may zip tie a couple of these things back up just because I don't want them dragging when I'm moving it around. Perfect. And Let's see here, I'm gonna see, once I get the wheel on, I may set it down on something and then go ahead and try to take that shock out. I don't, I don't know why it matters. I guess, it, like I said, I'm just trying to sell some extra, extra parts that are on it. I'm sure those are still good. They look pretty new. I think it's worth keeping them. All right. We'll snug this down, zip tie some stuff, and uh, get the wheel back on. Now we got a 16 millimeter. I don't think that's factory, but that's what I was afraid of. 
Do you see that wheel going down? So I need to lift it up and put something under the wheel. I'm afraid it's going to release a lot of pressure and that's going to fall out of that bottom ball joint. So I'm going to put something under the wheel, lift it up a little bit here, get like a block of wood or something and put some weight down on that wheel. Ooh, my jack's moving. All right. I'm gonna have to move my jack stands up a little bit. Then we'll put some a block of wood under that tire and see if that's good enough to make it happen. The downside is I just gotta take it off the tire. So I may, you know what guys, I may just leave those in there. I don't think it's worth it. What are they gonna sell for? Like 50 bucks used? I mean, they're like, they're like 50 bucks new. So I'm gonna leave them. Yeah, let's just go on to the other side. Now, I don't recall on this side if it has a bolt on the bottom ball joint. Like I said, this was a 17-inch um, wheel. So, obviously, they did some clearancing. But I don't know whether they uh, left the nut off that bottom ball joint. Oh yeah, it's not even in it. <laughs> okay. Oh man, guys, I'm telling you. Some people's way of doing things is really sketchy. So same situation, I'm gonna put the jack and the block of wood under here. Just give it some added support while I'm doing what I'm doing. Just in case that thing decides to shoot out and hit me in the face. I don't think it will, but we'll try to be safe. Those things are under a ton of pressure. You gotta swing that A-arm all the way down in order to get these things out. that my um, the steering the power steering is leaking because I'm moving the wheel back and forth All right, it's gonna be a pain over here too so we're gonna have to break it loose with the break over You guys see how much play there was in that wheel? Because that ball joint's not in. My guess is he was probably gonna try to sell the spindles and maybe the springs and he couldn't get the ball joints loose would be my guess. Because he parted the rest of this truck out. When I saw this stuff, I'm like, well, I knew I'd definitely use the spindles at some point. And then when I bought the Yukon, it was a no-brainer. Couple zip ties. Let me go grab my zip tie cutting tool. Let's get these zip ties cut. This is put together correctly. Wow. And I get a lot of people that come up to me um, that have seen the lowering on the green truck video or whatever, and they're they ask me like, why does my truck 
You know, why does it ride bad? Well, guys, you know, a lot of times people don't do things the right way, and that's, you get a, or buy cheap parts, or, I, I said a while back I was gonna make a video, and I haven't done it yet, but I need to make a video on how, you know, the importance of certain parts that I use. You know, when I lower something, I, I know it's tempting because the kit is, um, let's say the kit's $500 for drop springs and spindles. Well, there's more that goes along with that. And if you want the best ride, you're going to have to spend some money. This one is spinning on me. So here's how we combat that. You get like these vice grips like this. Put them on here. Try to clamp down a little bit. Look at that. This one is already loose. Matter of fact. I have to put something in the bottom of it because it's spinning. Oh, and there's not a spot for anything. Okay, so we're going to have to use the clamp method. That could also be why he chose not to keep the spindles. You don't have a lot of clamping room here. Because we need to get out of the way in order to get the 18 on the bottom. So here's what I'm hoping. Let's get this in here. And see if we can knock it out with it. Maybe we can just bump it. I may have to go get an extension with the, the swivel on it to make this happen. There we go. Just got lucky. So here's what I think is going to happen. I think that's going to come out immediately. Yep, yeah, that's what I thought. So the only thing that didn't come out is the tie rod. Normally I would never tell you to do that, guys. Woo! Those things are so heavy. Now, same thing. Take our 15, get these guys out. To the other I'm gonna go ahead reassemble this I won't show you guys any more of this and then we'll try to move on to the fuel pump and the wiring like I said it's got a really nice wiring uh, and that's to help boost the voltage but uh, that's what I'll show you guys next I'm gonna go I'm gonna whip this thing back together you see what I'm talking about down here great so uh, either way like I said I'm gonna put this back together then we'll go to the fuel pump now, generally how the fuel pump stuff works is it has an additional power source. And I think I found that up here. That's what this guy is right here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to yank 
this wire out of this mess up here they've got. I can see more of it back behind here. Um, holy cow, what a mess. Um, there's some there. I'm guessing this is part of it. Oh, uh, there's a big relay box. Holy cow. So I, I need to get I need to get my clippers and clip all this loose so we can uh, yank it out. I'm assuming from the looks of it, they went like down the fender and down the um, down the frame rail. So let's see if we can loosen up that in this junk mess of wires. Well, I got that mess of wire unhooked. You can see there is a relay. There's a jumper fuse, which has been tagged into. And then there, I don't know what this junction box is, but then it's got a power terminal and a ground. So either way, I've got this to where it's all loose, but instead of dragging that big guy all the way through, I think what we're going to do is, um, this is like a hot wire kit, they call it to boost um, the amount of voltage that goes to these things. So let's see if we can push this out. Okay, now we've got a bunch of zip ties here. You can see I've got part of a flip kit. Man, they got a bunch of zip ties. This must come with a mile of wire. See all of it coiled up here on top? I don't exactly know how they tied into this wiring. So what I'm gonna do, since it's all taped up, I'm gonna peel back this tape. I'm gonna take a picture of the wires that they tagged into, and I'm gonna cut them loose. And then we'll drag this I think we're gonna have several zip ties. I'm not gonna show you guys under the truck, but you get the idea. Um, I think we'll have several zip ties under the truck. This wasn't done too terribly bad. The way they ran the wire um, actually isn't terrible. So, but either way, let's get this unhooked and then we'll see if we can get the pump out. Now I've got all the wiring out. I'm gonna attempt to knock this snap ring around and get this loose, but Guys, just know that this is probably not the best method. I'm using a screwdriver, an old flathead, and a hammer. They make a um, brass one so it doesn't spark. Uh, I'm gonna wait and unplug these until I get the snap ring loose because of that exact reason. Now, look, um, sometimes they're really stuck. I don't know. Actually, I'm going the wrong way. It's starting to come loose. There we go. So we're loose. But until we get this unplugged, we're not gonna be able to get anything out. So, probably have to go get my needle nose. This is just a, these are just quick disconnects. I may make it without the needle nose. This one's already broken, so that makes life easy. Okay, let's lift this thing out and see what it even is. I have no idea, guys. It looks kind of... It looks like an aftermarket one anyway. You want to be careful not to mess up your sending unit. They're pretty, pretty common for them to go bad. It's definitely an aftermarket one. I'll try to pour some of this back in the tank so they don't make a huge mess. But Let me see if I can... I'm going to go grab something and see if we can pop this apart and see what actual pump is in there. I'm going to let it set for a minute though and try to drain off a little bit. Huge mess. 
now, I don't know that I've ever taken one of these apart or it's been a while. It looks like the center section comes up. Got that clip loose. Let's see if we can get a screwdriver and pop this other one loose. Okay, there's that one. I hope you should take this sock off the bottom. I don't really want to if I don't have to. There we go. Let's see if we can, oh my gosh, the junk. The junk, guys, in this pump. I'm wondering if this is a whole assembled unit. I wouldn't think so with that rinky-dink wiring and these crimp-on connections, but maybe so. I can't even tell what kind of pump it is because it's in this casing. There we go. Take this sock off if I can. I don't know that I'm still gonna be able to tell if I got the sock off. But look at all the garbage on the bottom of that. I'm guessing whoever ran this ran it pretty low on gas. It's a red pump, but I just can't tell what it is. Tell you what, let's do. Let's disconnect it up top here. And let's see if we can pull this out. It was a tight fit, that's for sure. I think we're gonna need some pliers too. There we go. Well, maybe We get this part off. You can tell what it is. I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy. I don't see how this goes through there. So now we got a pump in here, but what is it? I don't think with this sock on the bottom, we're ever gonna be able to tell. And I'm pretty sure this sock clips on. Yeah, it does. There we go, now it's starting to come out. I just wanna see what it is. Like, how am I supposed to know? Oh, it's an air motive stealth pump. That's a pretty decent pump, guys. Okay, so I may keep this thing around. Um, yeah. So what I'm thinking I'm gonna do Obviously, we got some gas left in it. I'm gonna let it drain out. I'm gonna see if I can order a new sock for the bottom. And I'm gonna keep this thing. I'm gonna run the numbers on it and see exactly what it is, but I think this is probably a pretty decent pump. 
I just, man, it would suck to put this in and it not work. All right, well, I think we've got everything accomplished that I wanted to get accomplished today, but I'm gonna run around and check and make sure there's no other little things that I wanna take off. Well, I got this thing back on the GoJax, and honestly, guys, I think um, after just walking around looking for little stuff on the outside, I've got everything that I want to pick off of it. Um, there's nothing else that stands out to me anyway. So uh, we still got a lot to pick off this truck. You know, like I said, guys, the original reason I hope they bought this whole thing was because I want to do the power window swap on my green truck, but the green truck's not running without the transmission in. So I'm not ready to get into that just yet, but you know, a, cool, a couple cool things that I was able to pick off with the spindles, since I had a set of factory ones, that was really nice to have. I uh, got those laying over there in the box. I am going to scuff those up, clean them, and probably shoot them with a little bit of paint before we go installing them on the Yukon. But other than that, you know, those are probably 300 bucks. So I bought this truck for $400. Uh, the exhaust, obviously, I told the guy I would take back to him. That's fine. But I got a $300 set of spindles, and then I'm assuming, guys, that pump with that hardwire kit, it's gotta be at least $200. So let's just, let's just say it's 200, the spindles are 300. So right now I got $500 worth of parts, and we have not even got the stuff that I bought the truck for. So, uh, you know, sometimes it's better to buy them like this. Now, I am not anywhere close to being ready to strip out all the interior, because it is going to be quite the undertaking to get the power window swap done but i also don't want this thing around here forever so the cool thing now is it is at least mobile so the front wheels turn we're not hitting the bottom ball joints uh, it's got a rear end in it and i can roll it so i can at least move it over push it outside use my four-wheeler to drag it back in when i'm ready but i will tell you that i don't want it sticking around long so i think we will probably bust into it um hopefully soon i really guys i I know how it goes when you're doing swaps like this or using parts off a vehicle. Inevitably, let's say that I pick all the stuff out of the interior for the power window swap and then uh, get rid of the truck. I just know how it goes and I will get like halfway through this and I will have forgotten like two or three little pieces that I need. And so I'm, I, may, I may strip it down and keep it maybe somewhere Maybe I can find a place to put it. My neighbor's got a spot. Maybe I can drag it out there and keep it there in case I need a couple pieces off of it. But we're also to that time of the year where if it's sitting outside, wasps will start to build nests in it and whatnot. So I really, I really want to start on it relatively soon. But I don't know whether we're going to lower the Yukon first. I know there's some other things that I want to do before I start this, but um, maybe it can set outside. I can pull it back in or maybe with the go jacks, I can kind of swing it around in here somewhere. But either way, we did get the stuff stripped off that I wanted to get stripped off in this video. Uh, guys, we've still got a lot to go. So, uh, if you did like this video though, please go down there and smash that thumbs up button. Guys, if you are not subscribed, you got to go down there and hit that subscribe button. Of course, while you're down there doing all that, ring that bell icon that notifies you every single time we drop a new video and stay tuned to see what we do on this thing next.